かって俺が守るかわいいねおいとはおいとブロンベ見せてその先の力というものをブリーチブレイクス Alrighty, what is going on, you guys? This is your boy, the Death Smasher, and welcome back to yet another Bleach Brave Souls video. And today, we are finally going to be comparing the 7th anniversary Ichigo to the new Parasol Balgo for the first time ever in the game. And、uh, yeah, sorry if I took a bit of time to get this out, but better late than never. And we may as well do it because these two characters are pretty much competing in terms of who is the best. Mind character as an overall, so it's time that we go ahead and break these characters down and determine who is the better mind character. But before we dive into the conclusion, we need to break down the stats, skills, do the gameplays, see how fast they clear, give out the pros and cons, and then finally draw out a conclusion. Now, there's one thing to take into consideration these two characters have almost the exact same skills. With a couple things being different. So let's start off with the 7th anniversary Ichigo. Ichigo has double killers of Soul Reaper and a r o n k a r has weakening and paralysis on his entire kit, so nothing is gonna stop him in case there is an IT where they completely make enemies immune to a status element. And along with everything else, he does have Frenzy plus one with a Berserker of 40%, status element spiritual pressure boost of 80%. 80% hit underground enemies, has sharpshooter, meaning that he can nullify resistances and has guard break simultaneously, shared complete status immunity, so nothing is gonna stop him and is going to be sharing said status element immunity for 10 seconds to all of his other allies. Bombardment plus one, making him a very solid nuker. He is still by far the fifth best nuker that we have in the game overall, and as a throwaway ability, bruiser 20%. And also has strong attack reaches time of minus 14%. Very stacked skills. It's just that to be complete, he needed something else besides Bruiser, like increased status element chance or anything of that kind of sort. But he does make it up via the innate abilities because he does have Immobilizer plus Innervator. It's a map wide AoE innate skill where it allows Ichigo to inflict weakening and paralysis without doing anything. Every five seconds, With a 12% chance and lasts for two seconds, which is pretty good, and also comes armed with Havoc of 20% and s p e r n e r Plus One. So, even though he doesn't have increased status element chance, in my opinion, the map wide AoE skill does come in clutch with how his kit actually works. And the kit,、uh, sadly, only bad thing about this character is the SA1. It is the cross shaped SA, which only hits in four directions, making it a bit difficult to line it up and kill out multiple. Waves of mobs. But thankfully, that is the only bad thing about this character because his SA2 is gonna be the classic 960 into Homing Vortex, which is the same as 6th Anniversary Aizen, the Safwe Gein, even Parasol Macy for that matter of fact, and a full screen of 1200 radius. So, yeah, overall, he just has that SA1 that pretty much hurts him, but as an overall character, I do think that he is still pretty damn great and is by far one of my favorite characters. But now let's move on to Balgo and Osushi. Balgo and Osushi, they literally share almost the exact same skill set. The only difference is instead of inflicting paralysis, he inflicts drain on all of his attacks. His killers are different, being Quincy and Human Killer. Sadly, it's very much a throwaway because unlike Ichigo, where he can be used in four different GQ rotations, Balgo can only be used in one GQ rotation, and that is. The multi killer GQ, where it has humans, Quincy's, c e r n r i d e r s and Squad Zero killer enemy mobs as a whole. Meaning that you're not gonna get as much value as Ichigo for when it comes to guild quests. But taking a look at everything else, he has the exact same skills. Literally the same Soul Bomb, the same multipliers, 80% SP buff. The only major difference here is that Balgo has increased status element chance against all heart mobs, so he's gonna be able to inflict status element like the drip god that he is, and also has the triple farming skills, being the heart droplet drop of 30%, heart link slot potion skill of plus 5, and the super heart link slot potion skill of plus 5 as a whole. And on top of it, the innate abilities he has Havoc of 20%, Sharpshooter, and Sprinter plus 2. So, Yeah, the skills are very similar. That being said, unlike Ichigo, Balgo does not have 
hit hidden enemies. Cherik completes status immunity and doesn't have the map-wide AoE skill where it allows him to inflict status ailments even when not attacking. So that is the only main difference for when it comes to the overall skill set. Oh, and one more thing, uh, Balgo can revive on the Soul Bomb upon using it, whereas Ichigo doesn't. And the kit is also very different as well because his first strong attack is going to be the 750 AoE in front. For those of you guys that aren't aware of what it is, it's the same SA1 as the Thousand Year Blower anime Tech Uryu that we have in the game. SA2 is going to be the Vortex into Pushback Attack, basically the same as Tokinata, Christmas Toshiro, the Power Hikone, Azashiro, Christmas Noel, all those other characters. Not the greatest strong attack, but great for getting status omens procced in, and since he does have increased status omen chance, it's going to be helping out a lot, especially in Inheritance Trials, albeit not as strong as Ichigo's 960 Entomic Vortex. And then the SA3 is full screen 1200 radius. So yeah, similar skills, different kit. So how are we going to be comparing these two characters? Well, simple. We're going to be running them in both single player inheritance zone and single player inheritance trial and see how fast they can actually clear. Now, that being said, these quests this time around does have hit on around mobs, but I'm not giving Balgo the Zeta pill just so that way you guys can still see the overall optimal experience that you guys will see should you guys build up the characters the same way. So yeah, with that being said and done, let us go ahead and begin the gameplay aspect for these two characters right here. Those were the runs and Ichigo just managed to clear faster than Balgo despite being a flashed up short and his SA1 holding him down. That 960 into homing vortex is just something else. Balgo was also doing okay, albeit we didn't give him a Zeta pill. And the reason why he cleared significantly slower is because of the underground enemies. Which by the way, I'll have a run shown after the pros and cons of Balgo with the Zeta pill active to show you guys how fast he clears through. As for the pros and cons, here are what I've listed out. Alrighty, now Ichigo for guild quests, he isn't Yama level in terms of how strong the Soul Bomb is. 
but it's still a remarkable soul bomb. If you get this unit matched in Sanded T20 with 500 SP, you will have an easier time getting sub 1 in 4 geeky rotations, making getting copies of this character worth it. How he's immune to everything is great, you don't have to worry about anything, just strike with the SA2 of his and you immediately win. Oh, and his SA2? Still the best SA2 that there is in the game. Hands down, no discussion. Him being a premium unit is perfect because you can get this character from BBS tickets should you choose to save him up. Me being one of them that pulled both the 7th anniversary units from tickets. That being said, even though he's strong, he's just carrying and not farming anything. He also does not inflict status ailments as often as Bago would, and again, that SA1 of his is terrible, and even I consider it to be even worse than the 18% shave that most characters have. As for Bago, you get this character, you're set for every content in which you need to farm resources. Droplets, potions, super pots, he's the ace in your hand to use. Better SA1, you just hit in front, no BS of missing mobs, it's consistent and it works. Disabler, short term of increased status ailment chance, he just has a better chance of inflicting ailments compared to Ichigo. He does need a Zeta pill for hidden enemies. Bit of a hit or a miss depending from person to person, but Balgo just does enough damage on everything that you can just run that with the Kamari and the pill and you'll still be fine. His only shortcomings is the bad selection of killers. Now by that, I don't mean because of the lack of content to use these killers on, because for everything else PV related, they don't mean anything when you have a lot of DPS and have means of inflicting status ailments easier. It's for guild quests that you're not getting any value out of. Quincy and human killers is literally a multi-killer rotation, so unless Caleb plan to separate multi-killer guild quests, then Bago will just not be worth getting to 5-5 when it comes to the actual game mode. <coughs> Yama. <coughs> he also doesn't have immunity, so for when playing as the character, you want to be careful and dodge around the puddles a lot, even if he can drain on his essays. And this character is also a bitch to get 5-5 Max Transcended because Burn the Witch characters only ever come back once a year. Twice at Max, not pullable from tickets. Now before drawing the conclusion, here's Balgo with the Zeta Pill completely sped up. In IT, he still cleared a tad bit slower by 5 seconds, but in IC, he cleared faster than Ichigo by only 2 seconds. So despite the shortcomings, Bago is still a powerful character. So who's the best mind unit in the game? It's 7th anniversary Ichigo. For endgame content, he is easily a great all-rounder with very powerful skills and a great soul bomb. And thankfully, even with his SA1 being absolute dog water, his SA2 is a complete lifesaver. Balgo had potential to be the overall best mind unit in the game if he had different killers and an even more broken SA1 or SA2, but when you compare Balgo to the other top 5 mind units that we have in the game, he just takes the number 2 spot just fine because of the sheer amount of utility and value he brings to the table. He is no slouch and in my opinion is a must have. Should Burn the Witch return later on this year, he is a must get alongside Bruno and Macy. And that's the end of the video. Thank you guys for watching. If you guys have enjoyed it, don't forget to smash that like button, share this video with your friends and family, subscribe to the channel if you guys haven't already, and hit the bell notification so that way you guys are notified for the next video I upload or the next stream I do. So yeah, hope to see you guys all next time. I kind of wish I had an opportunity to uh, compare Ukiora and Macy, but uh, I don't have Macy sadly. But um, yeah. I hope to see you guys all in the next one. This has been your boy, The Death Smasher, and I am signing out. So take care, lads. Peace out. Bye.